Allison Sargent joins me on the set for today's press review. Hi, Allison. Hi, Jeannie. Lots of focus, of course, on that tight race out of the German election. Yeah, the German tabloid Bild is comparing it to a suspenseful crime novel. Their front page headline today basically translates to the chancellery thriller. The paper notes that the socialists do have a slight lead on the conservative coalition. Still, as we read on the front page of the Frankfurter Allgemeine, both the SPD and the CDU have claimed the chancellery. Frankfurter Allgemeine writes that Germany is now gearing up for months of unprecedented negotiations, and negotiations in which they say the Greens and the Liberal FDP will be the kingmakers. Now, according to weekly paper Die Zeit, the fact that neither the SPD nor the CDU got a strong majority is bad news for Germany. They say that's because it means that whatever happens, neither party will have the mandate that they need to actually carry out any major policy changes, uh, which Die Zeit says people really want to see. Uh, it's also bad news for Angela Merkel, who is probably looking forward to finally taking a break after 16 years. Uh, in this cartoon from the Rheinisch Post, uh, all of her bags are packed, but she's calling home to say, sorry, sweetheart, I may not be done with work for a couple more months. <laughs> OK, that political situation in Germany obviously being very closely watched in the EU, particularly in France. Yeah, Germany's new leader, of course, going to have a very big impact on European relations. Uh, Liberation has a pretty good pun headline today, not Bundestag, but the Bundestag. Bundes vague, a vague as in vague, because no one knows what these results are actually going to lead to. A Liberation is worried that long negotiations in Germany could lead to European paralysis uh, lasting uh, into the early months of 2022. Uh, meanwhile, Liberation's cartoonist Coco has a rather critical cartoon uh, showing Europeans bidding farewell to Angela Merkel. They're wishing her health above all else, and they're wearing gas masks to combat smoke from that coal plant. Uh, Liberation a left-wing paper, of course, and this is a nod to Angela Merkel's failure to transition Germany away from coal energy. So staying with the energy theme now, we're going to move to the UK, where many papers are slamming the fuel shortages that are caused by a lack of truck drivers. Now, left-wing tabloid The Daily Mirror calls the situation a shambles on their front page today. Uh, they warn that the petrol pump chaos could last for 10 more days. Uh, the Mirror is also reporting that Boris Johnson was warned months ago in June about the lack of truck drivers, yet he he did nothing. Uh, as a result, thousands of the country's gas stations have run dry amid panic buying. Uh, you can see one of the massive lines at a gas station on the front page of the eye. Uh, paper, the paper headlines that the army may now be deployed to step in and drive fuel tankers. The government has already announced uh, that they will issue thousands of temporary emergency visas for foreign drivers. Uh, but for the cartoonist Brian Adcock, that's not enough. You can see here he's comparing those extra driver visas to the delivery of a teeny tiny aid package. Uh, the idea here is that the UK government seems to be having a supply issue of their own when it comes to supplying any solutions uh, to this crisis. And then in in another cartoon, this one by Patrick Blower, we see Boris Johnson driving a global Britain truck. Instead of the coronavirus slogan, though, stay home, save lives, it's stay home, protect the government, and save fuel. Uh, he's giving the country a big thumbs up. You see Boris Johnson is heading right off of a cliff. All right, this next story now is about a very special delivery. It's about the baker who's been chosen to supply bread to the French president. Yeah, this is an annual event here in Paris. Uh, every year, the regional bakers union picks the best baguette in the city, and the winner gets a contract with the Elysee Palace to deliver bread to the president. Uh, Le Parisien tells us more about this year's winner. You see him here. This is Macram Accrout. He's from the bakery Les Boulangers de Reuilly, which is in the 12th arrondissement. Uh, he's from Tunisia, and he came to France undocumented when he was 23. He is now a French citizen. Uh, he, he said that he's feeling a mix of happiness, pride, and fear about winning because delivering bread to the president is a very big responsibility. And then, fun fact, Jeannie, you may remember uh, that last year's winner was actually also originally from Tunisia. I'm going to go check that bakery out in the 12th. Uh, Allison, we're going to wrap up now in Rome, where the city is facing an invasion of wild boars. Yeah, these pictures are really crazy, Jeannie. Apparently, entire families of wild boars are just wandering through through traffic in Rome and digging through the garbage cans has become a very regular sight. Uh, we read in USA Today that Rome actually has local elections coming up next week, and this wild boar invasion has become a political weapon used to attack the mayor, Virginia Rad uh, Raggi, over the city's garbage collection problems. Uh, but experts say that the issue is tied, at least in part, to just a booming boar population in the region outside of Rome uh, that's causing so many animals that they're coming in to seek food in the city. Uh, there are calls to step up 
up the efforts to cull the animals. I have to say, I think it's kind of exciting. I wouldn't mind seeing boars roaming around in Paris, but it is, they're intimidating also. Uh, Alison, thanks so much for that. Alison Sargent there with today's press review.